Hello, Miguel from Grimoire here, and I'm going to show you how to reorder inline list inside Glide. So we have a list here, and we want to reorder this list permanently. And the way we can do that now with this app is, let's say we want to move item one to position eight. Let's do that. Uh, select new position, done. And you can see how now item one is in position eight, and all the other items have been rearranged accordingly. Now, if we iterate through all the items, we can see how we start at two now, and then the last item should be one. So the existing row order one now is eight, and we can keep doing this indefinitely. So let's see if we want to move item three to position seven. So let's just move item three to position seven, and you can see how now position seven is three is the existing item three and we've still saved the fact that we wanted to move item one to position eight so if we iterate through the list you can see how now in position seven we have what it used to be position eight and position eight is what it used to be position one now unfortunately in glide this is not easy to do because you don't have a drag and drop rearranging feature uh, natively which means you have to do this using logic and quite a bit of logic in order to accomplish this. In essence, what we want to do is to generate a new array order once we decide which item we're moving to which location. And to do that, if we go to the back end, to the database here, what we're doing is grabbing the existing order. We call this order row. In this case, there's eight items. Right, we're grabbing this from the relation of with all the children. So there's eight children that, that are related to this specific parent. We can see them here, and their children. All right, the way we're generating the index or the order, the existing order for the items is by creating a self relation where we grab all the row IDs, and then basically we use a find the first index of an element in array computed column and then we can generate the existing index order and then we just add one with a math column in order to get the actual order from one to eight instead of starting from zero now we're going to grab that and pull it into our parent so we have always the existing order in which the elements were created now the trick is that we want to now generate a new order based on a move let's say we're moving order one, so this is the order from, and we're storing this in a user specific column because we're going to store this temporarily. And we want to move this to the new order eight, okay? So now we can see we've generated a new order list, comma separated list, where we're basically moved item number one to position number eight, and you can see that exactly that's what happens. The new list, now it has one in the eighth place. And the trick to do this in this case is by using a JavaScript function that basically rearranges the existing order array to the new array based on the location that we're moving. So in this case, one, so order from if to the new location, which in this case is gonna be represented as the variable P3. And where we're entering as the existing order is the comma separated value of the existing or the lastly modified order, right? So the way the formula works, basically first we're subtracting one to the order that we're moving. So we're moving uh, uh, from one to eight. That means we're actually moving from index zero to index seven. And that's why we're subtracting one to each of the uh, from and to values. Then we're going to generate an array using the JavaScript split formula, using comma as the value to, to generate each item inside the array. And we're gonna call that R, A-R-R. -R. So this is the array with the existing order. And now we're going to use two splice functions to rearrange the existing order with the new order, where we're basically gonna grab the from location we're gonna subtract or eliminate that item from the array, 
and then we're going to insert that location at the destination, which is P3, right? And we're basically grabbing element, which is the item that we are moving to the new location under P3. Anyways, if you copy and paste this, it should work. And then what happens, every time you wanna move an item to a new order, you simply have to store the existing order and then the destination order, and that computes the new order in a comma separated list, which then we convert to an array, where the, which is called order new array. Now, this always has to be there uh, because when we start from scratch, there is an existing order, which is in which the items were created. So th that's why there, this is always going to be there. But you can see it's not reflecting the new order because we're either grabbing the existing order, which was the order row. But if there is a new order stored under the order new column, then it will grab that one. So what we're doing is once we submit the new order, we're going to paste it under the order new column. And now we've generated the new order array, which we're going to pull in into the children's table. And you can see here's their new order. And then we can see that the existing order is this one, order row, but the new order is this one, right? Where one is now eight and all the other uh, items have been rearranged according to the order new array. So the new computer order. Now, once you've done that, that's when you can rearrange your list based on the new order. And also you can iterate through the list based on the new order. Now, in order to make this work, we actually copy and paste the new order manually. But the way this is going to work is once we do this from the app. So let me just delete all the temporary items here that we created. And we need to do this with a custom action. So if we go to any of the items and we want to rearrange again, let's say item one to position eight, we can click on the item. And when we enter the new location, what's going to happen is under the submit action, we created a new custom action called reorder. And what we're going to do is when we find out that the new order temp, so the value of the new order is not empty. In other, in other words, we enter a new order for that item. We're going to set the column values of the parent for the columns from and to. So we're going to grab the existing order. We call this order new, but let's say this is the first time that you reorder something. It's actually going to grab the existing row order. But if we enter a new order, it's going to grab that as the new order. And then we're going to move it to the location that we just enter in the form. And then it's going to move that to the new location. So basically grabbing the from and the to, we're storing that under the parent user specific columns called order from an order to. Once we have that, that is automatically going to generate the new order array using the JavaScript function I just show you. And what we're going to do is copy that new generated list, which is under order new compute. And we're going to paste that under the new order. Okay. And then what we can do is simply delete or clear the value of the, that we just entered temporarily for that item. So if we do that, we can see now, if you go back to the database, we can see that the order new is empty because we haven't generated a new order. But if I go and click done here, where we're moving item in order one to the new order eight, guess what happens? We have here the from order one, move to order two, that generated a new order list using the JavaScript function. And then we pasted that new order here and that generated the new order array that we're using in our children's to figure out where now that item belongs to in which order. Now, if you want to see how this works behind the scenes, simply go to listorder.glideapp.io and then you can play with the app yourself and see how it works. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.